Hello everyone, I'm Louis Bernetti, and for today's stroke education video series, we're gonna be discussing cognition following a stroke and the ways that we can work on improving our cognition and keeping it stable uh, following a stroke, whether that be as a survivor or helping stimulate that as a care partner. And so as always, I'm gonna be showing the screen so that we can discuss the material and kind of go over it together. And so cognition after a stroke can be impacted. Um, again, it can differ from individual to individual um, due to stroke being very dynamic and can impact people in different ways. But these are common cognitive challenges that could be presented after a stroke and the ways that we can kind of navigate around them. So cognition, um, common cognitive areas that could be impacted by a stroke would include our attention, our memory, language, and our orientation. These are all areas that would fall under the umbrella of cognition and are typically most common areas that we in the healthcare profession see um, impacted with the stroke. So how do we improve these areas of cognition um, to ensure that we don't decline and that we maintain a stable and even improve beyond um, following a stroke? So that's gonna start with repetitive cognitive stimulation which helps strengthen the brain and improve memory and attention. So it's kind of like the same idea as if, if you don't use it, you lose it, right? So think of like, if you're trying to build muscle, um, to maintain muscle, you have to continue to exercise. You need to eat a well-balanced diet and continue to activate and use those muscles because if you don't use them, we're gonna lose them. The same thing with our brain and our cognition that our brain requires the same type of exercise to maintain sharp and on top of it. So much like our muscles, it requires a well-balanced diet. It requires constant stimulation and exercise. And the set of muscles being improved and kind of getting those all buffed up, it's gonna be buffing up our memory, attention, orientation, memory, and language. So the best way to do this is with structure, repetition and consistency. Our brain loves those three things. They love structure, it loves repetition, and it loves consistency. So it can begin to develop and really build up strong connections and a foundation. So use structure, repetition, and consistency across all aspects of your life, not just with you know, practicing cognition, with managing your day-to-day -day lives, with you know, having kind of a daily schedule that you follow, having, making sure you're doing repetitious activities that are stimulative, making sure you're being consistent with your work, you're consistent on keeping up on your activities, you're consistent on exercising. These are all important for improving our cognition. And so something that could be experienced following a stroke, um, something that we call vascular dementia, which is oftentimes can occur after a stroke. Um, here, research shows that approximately 30% of stroke survivors can actually develop dementia within a year of a stroke onset. And so vascular dementia is a type of dementia that impacts our memory, thinking, and behavior. So these areas of cognition. Um, typically, it occurs after a left hemisphere stroke. Um, however, strokes do not always cause vascular dementia. As we said here, about 30%. So um, that's not always a surefire thing. But changing our lifestyle habits to improve heart health can slow disease progression of vascular dementia if this is something that um, you are diagnosed with or experience. And so it's just the same thing that even if you don't have vascular dementia, it's important to maintain that structure of consistency and repetitious nature and healthy lifestyle to maintain a healthy brain and body. Just as it is important to do it if you also are experiencing or living with vascular dementia. So making sure that you're keeping yourself stimulated, you're keeping yourself active. And the best way to do this is with, you know, um, board games, there's card games, there's puzzles. Um, if you're not so much into the game type, trying to do reading, listening to podcasts, anything that gets you thinking and makes you kind of sit in and work things through your mind, whether that be problem solving, um, you know, I whenever I like to do kind of like get my brain working, I have to go through those kind of like ethical dilemmas and discuss like, what would I do in this situation? You know, those philosophy classes, but find what works for you and what makes you kind of use your brain, whether it be, you know, thinking of different ways that you could, you know, complete an activity or how would you do a certain thing that you see on TV? You see somebody, you know, building a home and you're like, oh, I think I could do it different. I would build the home this way and I would do it this way. Anything that kind of gets your brain working in a different way as before. 
And so think of ways that can kind of get you up and thinking and get you out of that kind of monotonous everyday kind of low thinking, low activity. And so I want to emphasize that it's important that, because that might sound like a contradiction, that we want to be, you know, repetitive, being main structure and consistent. But when we say that, it means maintaining that at a high level. So not being repetitively and consistent in doing very little or not, you know, stimulating ourselves, but being consistent with high stimulation, high activity. Um, exercise is a great thing for cognitive stimulation. Um, having conversations with loved ones and family about topics of interest is a great way for cognitive stimulation. Really and truly anything that can get you thinking and kind of get your wheels turning is wonderful for cognitive stimulation. But um, if you really want to go after it, working on memory games, um, challenging your own memory, maybe reflecting back on old stories and telling them to somebody, maybe writing down old stories, kind of accessing that older memory are all great ways to work on our cognition. And so next we're gonna be talking about vision following a stroke. So I look forward to seeing you guys next time. And my homework for you guys is to go do something that's gonna make you use your brain, go you know, do a word puzzle, go tell somebody a fun story through your childhood, um, you know, do anything that kind of gets you up and gets you going. All right, I'll see you guys next time.